Have you ever wondered why some big cats develop a taste for human flesh? The infamous lions of Tsavo are not the only predators known to have attacked and eaten humans. For decades, man-eating lions have been a problem in various African regions. In this video, we'll dive deep into one of the most horrifying big cat attacks in history, where a man was eaten in front of his friend. We'll explore the reasons behind this behavior and the surprising intelligence demonstrated by the predators. You won't believe how these lions were able to carry out their killing spree for so long. Stay tuned until the end to find out how the situation was resolved, and why it serves as a reminder of the complicated relationship between humans and wild animals. The infamous lions of Zavo are typically the first thing that comes to mind when one hears the phrase, man-eating lions. This should not come as a surprise given the extensive coverage that this event has received in the media, which includes books and a film produced in Hollywood starring Michael Douglas and Val Kilmer. However, it is essential to keep in mind that man-eating lions have been a problem in a number of African regions ever since the middle of late 1800s, when Europeans first started writing about African games. This is when writing about African games became common practice in Europe. The more important question that arises is the reason why lions, not just a few of them, but entire pride of them, would develop a taste for the flesh of humans. What factors might have contributed to such a dramatic change in the type of animals they hunted? For centuries, this phenomenon has been a source of consternation for researchers and wildlife specialists. There is speculation that the lion's inability to find natural prey, such as zebras or antelopes, may have been a contributing factor in their decision to hunt humans for food. Others are of the opinion that the lions may have been taking revenge on humans for invading their territory and interfering with their natural hunting patterns by killing people. No matter what the cause may be, it is abundantly clear that the problem of man-eating lions is a complicated and multifaceted issue that calls for careful consideration and attention. Although the lions of Tsavo may be the most well-known example of this phenomenon, it is essential to remember that similar incidents have occurred throughout Africa, and efforts must be made to prevent them from happening in the future. In addition, it is essential to keep in mind that similar phenomena have occurred in the past. People had a widespread belief prior to the publication of Colonel John Patterson's well-known book, The Man-Eaters of Tsavo, in 1907, that the lions known to attack humans were typically elderly, frail, and unable to move properly. This was a common misconception. They believed that because these lions were unable to hunt the prey they normally did, they had no choice but to hunt humans in order to ensure their own survival. However, the book written by Patterson posed a challenge to this hypothesis by demonstrating that the vast majority of man-eating lions were in fact fit and able to hunt their usual prey. This new information represented a significant paradigm shift in our understanding of lions that eat humans. The importance of this newly discovered information was brought into sharper focus by a string of vicious lion attacks that took place in southern Tanzania between the years 1932 and 1947. An estimated 1,500 people were killed and devoured by a pride of 15 lions that terrorized the villagers during this time. These lions, which were later given the name the man-eaters of Njombe, were not elderly, disabled, or otherwise unable to hunt. They were in the prime of their lives, which included being young, healthy, and active. It is likely that the reason behind their attacks was a sudden decrease in the population of their natural prey. Because of this, they began to rely on humans as a source of food. The reign of terror carried out by the man-eaters of Njombe struck fear into the hearts of the villagers, who lived in constant fear of being attacked due to the prevalence of the threat. Lions were only located and killed after game hunters and officials from the government worked together to track them down and coordinate their efforts. Overall, the publication of Colonel John Patterson's book shattered the widespread belief that man-eating lions exist, and it paved the way for a better understanding of these formidable prey animals. The tale of the man-eaters of Njombe serves as a sobering reminder of the potentially catastrophic outcomes that can result when wild animals and humans come into violent conflict with one another. This particular incident offers a lucid explanation, in contrast to other cases in which lions have resorted to eating humans, which continue to be shrouded in mystery. As a result of the outbreak of the Rinderpest virus, the British colonial government issued an order for the eradication of zebras, antelopes, and wildebeest. These animals constituted a significant portion of the majority of African lions' diet. Due to the lack of available standard prey items, a particular pride of lions was forced to turn to hunt humans in order to ensure their own survival. However, hunger was not the only thing driving these lions' behavior. They also demonstrated a high level of intelligence, as evidenced by the fact that they came up with a cunning plan to keep the human population from becoming suspicious. They started going out hunting during the day, which was an abrupt change from their customary practice of nighttime hunting. This new strategy was an attempt to increase their chances of success. 
Because of this devious behavior, the lions were able to continue their killing spree for a period of time, during which they were responsible for the deaths of approximately 1,500 humans. It wasn't until the intervention of the British game warden George Rushby that the lions were finally eradicated from the area. The local villagers, on the other hand, initially resisted his efforts because they believed that killing the lions would be pointless and could make the so-called curse even worse. In their minds, these were no ordinary lions. Rather, they were dangerous beasts that had been sent to their community by a wicked witch doctor. This tragic event serves as a reminder of the complicated relationship that exists between people and other forms of wildlife. Although humans have the ability to wipe out entire animal populations, they also have the responsibility of working to protect and maintain animal populations. The story of the Tsavo man-eaters exemplifies the devastating effects that can result from upsetting the fragile equilibrium that exists between humans and the natural world. The majority of the instances in which humans were attacked by lions in Tanzania were attributed to the belief that the lions were spirit lions, or ghosts in the darkness, both of which are depicted in the title of the film Tsavo. On the other hand, there are explanations that are more reasonable for these events. Even though the stories of Tsavo and Njombe are widely known, there are still many unreported cases of lion attacks in rural areas. This is because it is difficult to obtain accurate census figures in rural areas. One of these incidents took place on April 10, 2008, and the only reason it was brought to light was because of the investigative reporting of journalists working for National Geographic. While Musafizi, Shabami, and his friend Muna were out cycling close to their residence, they were suddenly given chased by a lion weighing about 140 kilograms. Musavizi was horrified as he witnessed the lion attack and ultimately take the life of his friend, an event that has left him deeply traumatized to this day. Each year, there are a number of tragic incidents in which man-eating lions prey on humans, with many of these attacks going unreported. Because these lions frequently consume all of the remains of their victims, including bones, blood-soaked clothing, and shoes, it is difficult to determine the actual number of people that they have killed because they leave no trace behind. According to the book title, Death in a Tall Grass, written by Peter Capstick, there are dozens of lesser-known cases of man-eating lions that have claimed the lives of tens of thousands of people in just the past century. In spite of the efforts that have been made to hunt these lions, the precise number as well as the number of people who have been killed by them is still unknown, and they frequently outwit their pursuers for days at a time. While it is true that African lions in the wild continue to take human lives, the number of people who take the lives of lions is much higher. It is important to note that the population of African lions in the wild has decreased significantly. Villagers who live in lion territory are aware of the dangers that come with their location, and are willing to accept the consequences of their choice to do so. Some people view the tragic but unavoidable loss of a loved one as the price that must be paid in order to coexist with such formidable predators. As we conclude this discussion on the terrifying reality of man-eating lions, it's important to remember that these incidents, while rare, continue to occur in various parts of the world. As we continue to encroach on their natural habitats and disrupt their hunting patterns, it's essential to take measures to prevent these kinds of conflicts. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you at the next one.